Good afternoon and welcome to Last Time Series where we add value to people's lives happening every Wednesday and Thursday on Ebus Radio. You can catch the Last Time Series on the major podcast channels today. And to help us grow the channel and add more value to people's lives, please follow, like, and share today's conversation. Because in today's marketing and leadership segment, mm-hmm. joining me as per usual, a marketing and communications expert, I was going to say guru there. Yeah, <laughs> not not guru. quite. <laughs> Craig Pagely, how you doing, Craig? <laughs> yeah, Kevin, great, thanks. Um, yeah, I think even even expert is, is, is pushing it a bit, just uh, passionate and, uh, yeah, really love the industry on, on all sides. So, yeah, that's what brings the passion out. But uh, hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, I can't believe that uh, it's already a week since our last show and it's just, it's flying by at the moment. Yeah, I, you, you know, that there, there is science to prove that that uh, in, when your when your brain sort of moves into a state of flow, um, time responds differently to to how you're actually experiencing time. Um, that, that's a whole other quantum physics conversation. <laughs> Craig, so, I mean, we had, a, we had a great build on last week from our previous week's show where we expanded on the topic of consumer types to, to that of segmentation. Um, as with the previous week, I've definitely noted a, key, a few key points to apply in my business. And moving on to today's show, can you give us a quick overview of last week's conversation for the listeners? Uh, absolutely, Kevin. Yeah, we, we referenced the article last week titled Market Segmentation what it is, types and examples, and and, uh, this was found on questionpro.com blog, and from that we learned the following. So firstly, it's not just about understanding the objectives and actually knowing marketing segmentation strategy, Kevin, but it's more about knowing how to apply it. And the blog provided uh, five easy steps to enable marketers to develop their marketing segment strategy, and, and here are the five steps. So step number one is, Define your market. And at at this point of segmentation, you should focus on discovering how big the market is, where your brand fits in, and if your products actually have capacity to solve what it promises in in that respective segment. Number two is segment your market. And this step consists of choosing which types best suit your brand. Not all segments suit the brand and not all brands suit the respective segment either. Step three is understand your market and ask your customers the right questions depending on the type you choose. So you must know your target audience in detail and you can achieve this through the likes of online surveys, et cetera, et cetera. Step number four, Kevin, is is to build that customer segment. And I know we had a long conversation around this. And after collecting responses, you actually need to perform some data analytics to create that dynamic segmentation model that you you see as unique to to your respective brand and finally step five is is actually to test your strategy with anything we talk about in the show really it's about test fail reiterate move forward try again so so make sure you've correctly interpreted your survey data by testing segments of it with your target audience and that will help you in, in be able to revisit some of the market segmentation strategies and make those incremental changes where, where necessary, Kevin. And yeah, those are the key takeaway points from last week's conversation. Fantastic, Craig. Thank you for wrapping that up for us. Guys, if you want to catch that, <clears throat> go and check it out on the YouTube channel, the Lunchtime Series. Uh, all the all the following on episodes are there. Craig, so what are we going to be chatting about today? Uh, what, are, what, yeah. are we, what are we looking forward We're- to? We're in for another unique uh, topic today, Kevin, one that, that we've not covered on the show so far, that being the topic of sonic branding, or as, as some refer to as sound branding. So I, I think you're probably going to find it quite interesting. Have you heard of the term? I haven't. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know. I've never heard this before. So this is going to be interesting yet. <laughs> okay, <like> fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, as usual, I, I just want to start off with the definition of the topic at hand today and look at a few of the definitions that I've come across and, and we note the following, starting with uh, elegantthemes.com blog, which, which notes that sonic branding refers to the sounds or songs associated with a brand, a product or a service. And the association isn't created organically by fans, followers or consumers, Kevin. Instead, it's developed or adapted, adopted sorry, by the brand as part of its intentional strategy that helps its audience associate the sounds with that particular brand. According to Cambridge Dictionary, using a sound in advertisement for a product 
so that when you hear the sound, you think of the product. According to brandchannel.com, although not a new phenomenon, sonic branding is becoming an increasingly strong vehicle for conveying a memorable message to targeted consumers. And from non-lyrical sound bites to catchy snippets of tunes, sonic brands take the advantage of one of the brand's most powerful memory sensors, sensors that being sound. According to audiodraft.com, the brand identity is built on abstract attributes and associations which a company wants to convey and, and stand out with. And the rise of online streaming and new audio first mediums are definitely now pushing brands to expand their territory in the realm of, of sound by creating their own audio brand guidelines as well, which, which is quite fascinating when you start getting into the depth of that. And, and lastly, their audiodraft.com notes that studies are showing that sound has an uncanny ability to humanize and unify brands' presence in today's many touch points. And, and that's a lovely, it's a lovely place to, to be humanizing and unifying uh, a presence of a brand across the touch points. And, and music and voice that are aligned with the brand's persona generate much more favorable responses and obviously increased memorability, Kevin. Well, now that you mentioned, now that you've explained it, Craig, <laughs> we look at the voice of Steve, right? Remember the voice of Steve? That, yes. was, that was representational of, uh, you know, what F&B, you know, even though Steve was from B-Bank, Steve, the, you know, hello, I'm, from, I'm Steve from B-Bank. I want to tell you about the brand new tech account. That, that whole line uh, became synonymous with that telephone ringing right in the beginning. Uh, and everybody knew this is an F&B ad, right? I think of the, the other one uh, as reference is the friend song. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that, that that sort of fun song that the friends, you know, the friends yes. um, series. They yes. have that that wonderful song where they're standing around the the the, um, the, the bar counter, water, the water. fountain. Yeah, and uh, and then they look, jump in the fountain and they sort of dancing in the fountain and stuff. Uh, you know, it, it's that it's stuff like that. That and now what it also occurs to me every time you hear like carte blanche, like I I can even hear the beginning of that carte blanche. <laughs> You know the song that plays for Carte Blanche. Um, um, so yes, I mean, there's that you're, you're, you're right in it. You're absolutely right in it, Kevin. And and that that is the the the, the essence of the conversation we we're having today. So that's fantastic. Yeah. But, but what, what's what I, interesting what I, about it? Yeah. Craig, sorry. The I just want to mention that what's interesting from a from a from a um, from a brain science perspective is we also know that people learn information using their senses, right? So. We pick up our data using our senses, that, and that we call the visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gastatory. So, you know, from a, an auditory perspective, we make huge, um, you know, auditory learning can be, it's, it's my preference of learning anything. So I would rather listen to an audiobook than read something. So when I'm hearing the connection of information, I make it from, an, uh, from a sound uh, learning perspective rather than from a reading one. So that, auditory that's is really, really important. Yeah, that's that's really great, and I and I I knew I would unlock something relative to <laughs> to to your your learnings and and your your particular business uh, around this particular topic. So that's great. We're gonna have some some really cool conversation. But but I do want to add though, what 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 I found really fascinating, Kevin, is when doing the prep for the show, I picked up on the word sound, and and did you know that it only takes 0.14 seconds for human beings to react to sound and that we automatically experience an emotional response whenever we hear certain tunes. So when brands are, are getting yeah. that particular aspect right and you're leaning in within less than 0.2 of a second, you know you, you, you're creating the right, right framework for your sonic branding. That's also why, you know, if you, uh, and unfortunately I use multi-choice as an example because that's where it all happens often. Um, every time they have an advert, the advert's louder than the actual program, right? Because that's what pays for advertising, and that's what pays for for the, the pays the bills, really. So that you know that that adver advertisement segment, you've got to turn it down usually, especially if you're watching the rugby, for example, because everybody's watching the rugby and you want to get so involved. The advert space being sold, that ad is louder than the actual um, rugby itself, right? And it's purely based on the association and stuff that people would like need to pay attention to quite uh, even when it's irritating. You know, advertising is 
whether it's good or bad, it's still the sound that's connected to it. And as yeah. humans, we do respond to it within seconds. Yeah. I didn't know it was 0 0.146. That's, that's really quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah. So, Craig, uh, what kind of brands use sonic branding? Because uh, yeah. I, mean, I, can, <laughs> I can think of a few, but like, but yeah, de definitely, what Kevin, kind of brands do this? Millions of brands around the world use use sonic brandings, and uh, many that we use actually on a daily basis apply sonic branding. And, and believe me, you'll definitely recognize a few of these instantly when I mention them. So I'm going to play three examples of of, of brand you have little snippets and and ask you if you if you recognize them. So let me go to the first okay. one if you don't mind, and I'm going to um, pick up on that and and see if if you can recall this. Let's go back. It's a very fast one. That's, oh, that's the second one. I want to just take you back to the first one. Do you recognize that at all? I'm not hearing anything. Oh, oh gosh. That's an issue. Okay, so what I'll do is send you the links. Um, but but I've, I've selected three very well-known catchy uh, sonic tunes the the first being the the intel uh, sonic which was actually created by an austrian musician walter werzawa in in the 1980s it's a three second long uh, um, sound brand and and it became one of the most well known in history kevin and and what was really interesting here it consists of five note mnemonics and, and it's estimated to be played every five minutes somewhere in the world. So, you know, on the back of that, you can you know, get to understand how many PC-based laptops are opening at, at, at any one time. I've, I've lost you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I've got I, it. I'm going to play it. Let me, know, let me know if you can hear it. There we go. That's you right. recognize yeah, yeah. it. Now. Yeah. 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 Intel, right? Intel, that's right. So, you know, from the, from the 1980s, three seconds long and played every five minutes somewhere in the world. The number of laptops that, that are, that are uh, you know, being opened, computers as well. So the next one, I don't know if you, if you want to uh, try and find that as well, if it's not playing from my side, is McDonald's. I'm loving it. Let me see. Yeah, let me see. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> that is it, you know. And it's just that whistle that people need to hear, right? Because they finish the sentence. I'm loving it. They actually sing it, yeah. Exactly that. So it, it's it's a sound for McDonald's. And while McDonald's first launched uh, as a franchise operation as far back as 1955, Kevin, it only launched its first global marketing campaign in 2003 with an actual slogan, I'm loving it. And, and that slogan was then accompanied by a vocal hook, which was, yeah, quite quite universally popular and instantly recognizable, and and today really is 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 the the clarion call for the brand. There are different iterations of it and things like that for different campaigning, but the purity of that just really really stands out. And then and then the third one, the the reason I I, I selected this as a as a reference is that I think it's just about yeah every single one of us in 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 our age group and and, and segment know know this particular one. I don't know if you've been able to find it at all. Uh, let me quickly check here. Let me see if I can play it. <laughs> you know, that's so recognizable. It's like, and that's Netflix. Anything, right? It's Netflix, yeah. yeah. Exactly that. So, you know, you, you, this intro plays before you start watching any show on, on the platform. And here's, here's a couple of points around Netflix as, as a sound brand, Kevin. So the audio log for the streaming service comprises of two 16th note Tempani strikes on D2 and D3 simultaneously, which with are played three dotted half notes on D2, D4, and D5, according to the official trademark document. So you can see the extent to which uh, the, the, the importance of brand guidelines, trade registration, all of the associated aspects of, of owning the, the nomenclatures, the sonic branding, sound branding, really important to, to understand the, the depth of 
of, of you know, tying up all components of your brand as quickly as possible. But the, the key point here to note is that, that it's super short. Um, and, and what they, they did is they did some tests and, and they found out that anything longer would actually have irritated the town press viewers. And the, the positive thing is it just evokes a simple but powerful emotional connection every single time you hear it because your brain thinks, hey, binge watching. <laughs> so, so a really okay. positive association. And what's interesting now is like as you're speaking is mm. is you know because I think of training interventions that I often do. Um, how do you how do you bring uh, sonic branding into a brand? So you know, especially because you I do a lot of culture work and you know like what's the the culture of the business um, and how you could actually utilize a, a sound or a song or a a trigger. That really, you know, gets people recognizing and and maybe it's a case of them, you know, every time uh, the a company opens their their laptops, that they, you know, every time you log in to your your company, that your brand plays something and it stands for it represents something, right? I think that's such a it's such such a profound kind of uh, like place to play in, and I think it's it would be a fantastic sort of add on to to everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. So, so yeah. In addition to those three three examples that I've cited, Kevin, um, another proof point to the effectiveness of of brand sounds, at least sound brands or, or audio logs, um, come out in a couple of points that I picked up on on other sources. So, so the first one here is that brands that use music that is aligned with the brand identity are ninety six percent more likely to be remembered by the consumer than the brand that is that uses unfit music or no music at all. And the source there was, was Leicester University. Something for us to, to consider here. Um, podcasts generate up to 4.4 times better brand recall than display ads on other digital media platforms. And, and the source there was Madrola Nielsen's. The next point is, is out of those who gave a definitive answer, 74% of young adults believe that they develop a better understanding of a company's personality through a music source and, and PHMG uh, uh, and source there. And finally, audio ads that are more than, uh, audio ads are more than twice as likely to lift purchase intent and information intent than display ads, Kevin. And the, sports, uh, the source there was Spotify for brands. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember the, just the, the using, uh, when Adele brought out the Hello album, uh, her advert was just the first line, hello. Like she just sang that first line. And it made people go <clears throat> that uh, crazy <laughs> because of just the, hearing that first, oh my goodness, this is Adele. We need to buy the album. When's the album coming? And they created that anticipation. So like from an audio perspective, it, it's true. It's, you know, it's not something that you, you actively think of, but then you, you know, if, if when you've got stats supporting it to this degree, you're kind of going, okay, well, how the hell do I incorporate that into everything I do? Yeah. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah so it's, you know, there, there is a time and a place for it. Um, the, the shows that we're recording, definitely there's a great opportunity for us to find some kind of uh, audio hook uh, apart from yeah. our voices in the show. <laughs> Hopefully they are audio hooks. <laughs> yeah. But but, but Craig, I, I mean, I recall a number of uh, car radio and television adverts using sound in the campaigns on different uh, to differentiate themselves. I think BMW was one where they was the, they used the sound of the door closing to signal solid construction and durability. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, ab absolutely, and I think it was BMW. I know the German auto manufacturers really do focus on 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 that particular aspect of you know Mercedes Benz uh, even Lexus at, at at one stage you know going you know, on, on onto the Japanese side obviously um you know have recorded some kind of affirmation of the solidity of their construction and then once within the car the purity of the sound uh, uh, um in enhancing from the audio systems but also the quietness of of the drive but yes so you are correct and and definitely the thud of the door is something that I still reference to this day in anyone's car that I get into. That thud value stays with me and goes like you, you can't beat the Beamer from that particular association. 
but yeah, nevertheless, um, yeah, auto brands have have definitely for a long time been using sound to differentiate their their respective marks, Kevin. And it was often the more prestigious brands that applied these sounds to to their respective product advertising. And there's there's one really fantastic example that stood out for me and and i love it because i just absolutely associate with the brand and and bentley motor cars had the sound engineer and founder of radium agency andrew die he went to an antique an antique store to record an old clock sound to complement the elegance of the car's understatement so when you're in the car you're getting that coming through and you know just the, the the longevity of the the classicness of the brand and bringing bringing those other elegant layers from an antique store into enhance the the experiences is is absolutely fantastic yeah no I mean this just you mentioning it now it, it, it does like I, I, yeah I can I sort of make the the connection from that that uh, the ticking sound to to something that's classic. That's something you know. I make that association immediately. So that's such a smart move on their on their part. Absolutely, really is. But yeah, just to to expand on your question a bit more, Kevin, I want to reference the article. Does the automotive industry sound the same? And and this was published on LinkedIn on on April twenty nine last year, and it was published by Bjorn. Thor Lifeson, he's the head of strategy and research at Amp Sound Branding and fascinating company. I, I really enjoyed doing, doing a bit of investigation into their business. So the article addresses a report titled Best Audio Brands Ranking, which is based on the top 100 brands as chosen by Interbrand. We, you know, we've spoken uh, uh, before on, on the Interbrand's top 100 ranking. And, and it looks at the most influential, best global brand rankings. And as one would expect, there'd obviously be a number of automotive brands that are included in, in, in the rankings, Kevin. But what was fascinating is 14 brands, to be exact, were included in the top 100 ranking, which is quite, quite impressive. And what stood out for me in, in, in that particular context is every single one of those brands is actually using music in their marketing strategies currently. So... Bjorn uh, Thorlafsen notes that when we listen to a TV or radio ad, we often know what the brand is that's been sold just by listening to the music. And, and you alluded to that in, in a couple of the comments earlier there. And, and the automotive industry, the automotive industry is, is, is a prime example of that. And, and it often uses music that has distinctive qualities and it differentiates the music from other industries. And this was a really important piece. So whilst many brands across many categories and in the depth of, their, of, of, of the Mark uh, repertoires, they're actually using sound and music in a very different way to, to link up with, with the brands uh, in, in, in question. So, I mean, how did, how did they conduct the study? Uh, Kevin, they were able to analyze music used on social media, interestingly, by, by automotive ma manufacturers. And this music was then analyzed based on a variety of parameters, uh, specifically looking at, at three, that being genre, mood, and, and timber. And, and genres were divided into the usual genres of ambient, classic, blues, country, electronics, dance, indie, alternative jazz, metal, punk, rap, hip hop, reggae, rock, singer, songwriter, also further opportunity to then get it into a, a subset segment. But when, when you understand the layers of the genre segmentation, you can actually see the depth of opportunity for the number of brands that actually exist out there to plug into those respective genres. Because in a single, in a single uh, uh, branded house, you know, BMW from, from 7 Series all the way down to you know, the M1, there'd be very much a different association with the genre of music relative to advertising that particular brand. Then we also looked at moods, um, or at least they looked at moods, and, and you know, were they uplifting, energetic, happy, relaxing, calm, melancholic, dark, tense moods that were associated with the brands? And most definitely, you know, the, the, the Bentley experience would maybe have been more relaxing, calm, melancholic, and, and the energetic uplifting could have been, you know, the brand new Golf GTR or something like that. And then to, looking at the types of sounds used, whether they were 
choirs, acoustic or electronic. And, and to quote from the article, Kevin, the, the study compared all sounds from eight of the most active automotive brands, and it allowed them to uncover the dependencies, diversity, distribution and deviation of not only the brands in relation to one another, but more interestingly on how the consistent brands are with their sounds and how that reflected on their own product diversity and communication marketing approach, particularly when you get to understand the depth of, of the likes of, of mood and genre coming to the fore there. And we learned sort of the, the four key points that I wanted to take out of, of the article here, and that is that certain brands use a greater variety of genres and moods than others, and this can be expected as certain brands have a greater variety of product lines, and obviously certain brands have through the years been able to associate themselves with particular types of music. The second take out there was that two brands that use the most variety of genres are actually Hyundai and Mercedes-Benz. Honda and Ford actually use a variety of genres but never stray out of those into the unknown compared to Honda and Mercedes who are actually willing to, to be a bit bolder and, and experimental and, and are often you know, perceived to be edgy with, with, the, with the sound associations of their brands. And BMW stands out for using very similar music on most of the videos, whether, whether it's a deliberate sonic branding strategy, they couldn't really pick up on that in, in particular. But the article taught us this, so that brands in general use more variety of musical moods than genres in their video, Kevin. And this can be explained as, as music is used as a vehicle to facilitate storytelling, while brands adhere to appealing to the masses when it comes to the types of genres they go for. And Bjorn uh, Thorlafsson's final comment here is that music should be thought of as a universal language that links brands to fans. Lovely statement that. And as we edge closer to screenless future integrating music and sound into the overall marketing strategies, that is moving away from nice to have to a must, Kevin. Music links brands to fan. I love that. That's, uh, it's that's a fantastic statement. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, you know, from a, you know, especially when you're looking at branding and uh, looking at even from a marketing perspective, you know, how do you tune into how your audience uh, engages with you as your brand, you know, and where, where can you use that um, in a way it's, so it connects you to your, to, to your fans, right? It's, it's really, mm -hmm. really clever. So, I mean, Craig, as we close the show today, um, what can you share with our listeners, the, the, the key takeaways? Because to me, this is a, this is a whole aspect of uh, something I didn't anticipate and uh, definitely going to be looking into it. Great, Kevin. So I want to reference an article, Advantages of Audio Branding, as the key takeaway for the listeners today. And I came, came across this article on, on sonicminds.dk some amazing content in there as well. And and we note from the article that sonic branding is a strong tool through which companies convey memorable messages to their target audiences from catchy snippets of, of different tunes to non-lyrical sounds. Audio branding takes advantage of the most powerful memory of the human brain, as I mentioned earlier, sound. So the three advantages are noted as follows. Sonic branding triggers emotions and sound and music affects our emotional state much more than, than visuals do, Kevin. It affects our moods, feelings, behaviors, pulse, and actually can make us either feel sad, scared, happy, and it affects the way that we feel, think, and act. So knowing this and, and knowing that most of our decisions are made unconsciously, audio branding can play a huge role in actually creating that meaningful, effective, and, and emotional brand communication and connection, Kevin. The, the second point here is that, that sonic branding enhances brand recall. And studies show that listening to sound or music helps correlate with the message and actually helps improving the verbal memory of the audience, which in turn leads to an improved brand recall. And lastly, the, the point sonic branding gets more attention. So as consumers, we're exposed to a variety and an average of over 5,000 advertisements a day. And as we become more engaged, and consumed in this digital world that we live in, Kevin, the number of advertisements we are exposed to just keeps increasing. So as you well know, we've, we've adapted this, this automatic filtering out the multiple messages we face with daily. And on top of this, our attention span is, is shrinking significantly. So the inclusion of sound or music definitely helps to reinforce the brand's identity. And as such, it helps drive attention from, from that uh, target audience. So in closing and quoting directly from the article, 
The strength of audio branding also lies in subtlety. While visual advertising broadcasts through phones, billboards, and print ads can feel highly intrusive in our daily lives, audio can be consumed separately. Audio content relies, or requires less effort to follow than visual content, which explains why podcasts and other audio-first mediums are so popular. And those are the key takeaway, takeaways for today. Fantastic, Craig. Thank you. Um, I, I absolutely love uh, <laughs> that that you found so much about this. Um, I think it's a really cool sort of uh, consideration for a lot of brands out there, uh, and definitely, you know, uh, even bringing it into a training a training element of of creating that that um, uh, the recognizable kind of sound that goes, you know, that 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 starts off the day, perhaps, or something that that people connect to, so that they remember that emotional connection. Because I think uh, music in itself is, uh, you know, so emotive, um, and, and it moves people to to do and feel so much. So yeah, I love that you brought this into uh, to to share with us, Craig. Thank you for 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 the insights, and thank you for. Um, show i think it's what 76 already 76 right? that it is yes <laughs> guys you can catch us on ebus radio every wednesday and thursday and uh, like we said please follow like and share today's conversation and uh, because that way we can just add more value to people's lives craig have a fantastic week and thanks for chatting and i'll chat to you soon see you next week thank you kevin cheers bye bye, bye.